What is that mysterious quality in birdsong? It's a question we've been asking for hundreds, even thousands of years. In ancient Rome, a professional auger would observe the song and behaviour of birds in order to determine whether the gods approved of what the mortals were up to. The histories of music, art and literature are teeming with birds and birdsong. Around the 18th century, the ability to convey natural sounds such as birdsong in a musical composition became an expression of virtuosity, as in Beaver's Sonata Representativa in A major. The reaction to the Industrial Revolution triggered an idealisation of nature, and with it, birdsong. Then, in the 20th century, composers returned to giving a spiritual connotation to birdsong. You can hear this in The Lark Ascending, which Vaughan Williams wrote in 1914. The 20th century composer Olivier Messiaen collected birdsong like Bartok collected folk music. You can hear it in many of his works and nowhere more so than in Catalogue d'Oiseaux, which depicts the sound of 77 bird species from Messiaen's native France. Here, pianist Julian Trevelyan plays the curlew from Catalogue d'Oiseaux at Snape Maltings on England's Suffolk coast. The Catalogue d'Oiseau forms the centrepiece of this year's Aubre Festival, which takes place at Snape Maltings. Pianist Pierre Laurent Emar will play the work over the course of a day, at dawn, in the midday sun, at dusk and at nightfall. So what was Messiaen trying to say by using birdsong in his music? Many things, I guess. First of all, a possible door for escaping to his private life. That was very unfortunate at this moment. He was very deeply despaired. Uh, second of all, well, his love for nature and as a believer, his love for the creation. And third of all, as a great creator in the 50s, he needed a new material for composing music. The moments, the events in the music are of, often unexpected and create a kind of discontinuity, like in the nature, when suddenly a bird song at unexpected moment and surprise you. And of course, Messiaen was a great colorist, as everybody knows, so his harmonic language gives him the chance to paint um, these landscapes, let's say, or uh, these moments of the day, and of course, uh, also to communicate the emotions that he had in front of this magnificent uh, paysage. He wanted that one plays his text with extreme precision, with respect for all the tempos, well, like somebody who has written not poems with birds, but a catalogue d'oiseaux. He has, well, worked the birds so scientifically some, somewhere, and he wants to be very exact, very respectful, has notated the bird song, and when he taught musicians to play his music, has imitated the bird songs and has showed you really how to play them. We programmed Messian catalogue simply because of the inspiration provided by artistic director Pierre Laurent. And because he's such a supreme interpreter of Messian's piano music as well as so much other keyboard repertoire, um, the combination of music and place, which Olbra, Snape Maltings and the surroundings, including Minsmere, provide, seemed like too good an opportunity to miss. Where else 
could you actually have this connection between the acoustic sound of the piano and that experience of being able to hear the live bird song and also go on a journey with the birds themselves from dawn right the way through uh, in, into the, to the late night. So will the rural setting bring something English to this French work? By introducing real birdsong into our experience of the piece, Pierre Laurent Aymar is doing something new, but at the same time authentic. An icon of blue-collar rock, Bruce Springsteen combines politics and populism. He is currently touring his double album from 1980, The River, having released it as a box set last year.